Welcome to Pre-Service, a podcast all about preparing you for worship at Silverdale Baptist Church. My name is Michael, and I'm with my friend and co-host, Kevin. How you doing, Kevin? Hey, brother, I'm doing well. So good to be with you again. It's good to be here. It's I, good to be back. You know, for them, it's probably not been that big a break. They had they had one of us last week. We've missed each other for a couple of weeks now. It's so true. So I just recently got back from uh, a mission trip to Peru, and if uh, you followed that trip in our other series called Takeaway. Thank you for your prayers. Thanks for keeping up with that. It was so exciting to be down with the Hetzels. It was great to see you all. And uh, came back, caught COVID. (laughs) I now know what that means. (laughs) I now know what that feels like. I'm glad we're back together. It, yeah. it did interrupt our time in the studio, too. So uh, between you being on the mission trip and then being sick, it it caused us not to have a whole lot of time. So if you're seeing this a little later, there's a reason why. And it's all reasons. good. It's all good. There are reasons. But so. thankfully, for the use, uh, because of technology, we could record ahead and and get back tonight together. Absolutely. Staying on track as we continue our series in the book of Hebrews. Our pastors are preaching through the book of Hebrews. Boy, how great has it been. Oh, man. Fantastic. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Well, the truth that's in Hebrews is important for us to actually get into. And uh, tonight, I don't think we have a whole lot of preamble. We we want to keep this short for you all. Um, and so, do you want to dive in? Or? Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's all do right, it. let's Go start. Ahead Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 14. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling... Consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has, more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw of my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. God bless us with the reading of His Word. Man, I tell you, <laughs> how how are we going to unpack this passage <laughs> oh, brother. in the next 7 or 8 minutes I, I don't know that we are brother this is <laughs> this is rich this is rich and and we have gone into i i know the pastors have gone into on sunday morning um about hebrews about jesus being better and that is the focus obviously to people who for whom their jewish faith their jewish culture was close at hand they they had lived it and now they were in some cases tempted to go back to it right but finding that jesus was better well we've already seen the prophets we've already seen the angels and now the author jumps in on moses right, right. here's moses but i'm going to show you that jesus is better than moses and, uh, and how? Not to discredit Moses, not to take away from Moses any more than from the prophets or, or the heavenly host um, that were used. It isn't to remove any uh, information about them, but to focus and say, hey, Moses was a fantastic servant of the Lord. As a matter of fact, he says that, that Moses was faithful in all of God's house as a servant, but Jesus as a son. That's right. That's right. And so as I've been processing this passage this week, um, there's a phrase there towards the beginning of chapter three that's really uh, just lodged itself in my heart and in my mind. And that's the phrase, consider Jesus. It says, therefore, holy brethren, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the Mm -hmm. apostle and high priest of our confession. 
and how he was faithful uh, to him who appointed him, that is to the father who appointed him to a thing. If you go back and look in chapter two, uh, looking at verse 10, uh, it says, uh, for it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. So in one way that Jesus was faithful is he was faithful to that calling to suffer on our behalf. Yes. He perfected the process in that he finished the process yes. that he came, uh, that he began, he completed it. As he said himself, it is finished. And we get to enjoy the benefits of salvation because of his suffering. And in verse 18, it talks about how, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. So as you and I go through our daily struggles in life, uh, you know, we know that Jesus was tempted in yes. every and endured. way and endured. And we can find our faithful Savior to be faithful in all situations of life that we find ourselves struggling through. And so all that to say, I know we talk a lot about asking good questions, and yes. I know you have a couple of really good questions you want to pose to, to our, our listeners and viewers. Uh, but along with that, I just want to bring out the value of just meditating on Scripture, just letting the passage itself wash over you and soak in your mind and in your heart as you're preparing for worship. For me, the phrase this week is consider Jesus. Consider how he was faithful to suffer. Consider how he is faithful in being there for us on a day-to-day -day moment. What through does our that look like for you in, in a day? When might be a time that considering Jesus would be helpful for you? No, I you know, <laughs> there, there are so many. Yeah. Uh, trying to pull out one, uh, it, actually, it feels a little harder than it should because it it is an ongoing thing throughout the day. But, you know, as I come to work yeah. here at the church, um, I'm met, like I'm sure many of you are, with challenges every single day, decisions that I have to make. And and oftentimes I just feel underprepared and overwhelmed in making some of those decisions. I don't always know the next right thing to do. I'm with you, brother. And I find myself turning to Jesus saying, Jesus, I, I don't know what to do in this situation. Can you give me strength and wisdom in this? Or another time might be um, those times where things have gone well for me in ministry, uh, where it could be a temptation for me to think a little too highly of myself. I mean, I, you know, I mean, don't we all struggle with that from time to time, just thinking too much of ourselves? Yes. Uh, and so to consider how Jesus, he had every right to think more of himself than he, than he, uh, but he perfected that process that he, he finished that work. Yeah. But it was through suffering. So those are some ways. Those I, are some I ways. appreciate that. I do. And that's, you know, there, there are so many nuances to our day, you know, to mine, I, I know because we share to yours and, and no doubt to those of you who are listening or watching, um, there are nuances, and, and in those, being able to focus on Christ and consider Him. Um, you know, it, it may be, I consider the Garden of Gethsemane, where He said, hey, can't you all just pray with me for a, for a moment? Uh, or, you know, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And what He took on Him, sometimes I feel put upon. I'm pretty sure that the other seven point something billion of you probably <laughs> feel a little put upon at times. You know, why am I having to deal with this? Why do I have to? And, and then we remember, you know, the one who knew no sin was made sin for us. Uh, I think there are times when we consider things that he dealt with. Thomas doubting him after he'd shown up. Yeah. And, you know, show me. I, I've got to see the wounds. He's like, okay, Thomas, here. No, Lord, no, it's okay. I, yeah. I, and it's like, well, you, you know... Uh, how many times have I been the one? Now, now that does get down towards some of the questions when, when I look in chapter three and I see that there's some kind of a connection. So I'm I'm not trying to bring an answer here. I'm trying to just voice a thought as I was reading through three. There is a connection that the author makes back towards um, Exodus 17, mm -hmm. right? Where at the time Moses was leading the people. And they were clamoring, they were quarreling, they were voicing their frustration, and he literally thought they were going to kill him. Um, and the Lord produced water. They, they wanted something uh, to drink, and the Lord gave them something. And I think the, the challenge here is um, 
in verse 12, take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading to leading you to fall away from the living God, but exhort one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. I don't struggle with is the Lord going to cause water to flow from a rock, but what is it in me that I lack faith in God, that I lack faith that Jesus is there to provide for me, what is it in me that I'm missing that the author of Hebrews was guided by the Holy Spirit to provide this warning? Yes. What is the thing that it's exemplified in them historically because of that event, but the warning is to me just yeah. as much as to the people who receive this. So I don't have an answer for you, but I'd suggest you can look at, uh, what is it, Numbers 20, I Numbers believe, 20. And, and Exodus 17, and look at uh, Psalm 95. Psalm 95, yeah. Psalm 95 is where we see the the quote that comes in here. But I'll leave it at that because we're running up on time. So. Yeah, yeah, and and continue to read through this passage, continue to ask good questions of this passage, and continue to consider Jesus and how he's presented in this passage to you and to me as you're preparing for worship this weekend. And we do hope that you're going to be a part of one of our services this weekend. We have a number throughout the greater Chattanooga area on Saturday night and throughout uh, throughout Sunday morning. So check out our website for times and locations. And if you're away from here for some reason, join us online. We'd love to have you there. Spend some time with the Lord this week and enjoy Him. 